Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Um, this would be chapter 4 in uh, Grandmaster Hurong Hua's Sandwich Horse Treatise and in this chapter a very big important opening system will be discussed. It will be the 5-6 cannons with red uh, red 5-6 cannons with third point advancement versus black sandwich horse defense with the red elephant variation. Uh, in chapter 3, uh, there have been several boards that were shown uh, with red attacking in various different manner. But uh, as in the sandwich horse, the central cannon versus sandwich horse opening system, the 5-6 cannons uh, would hold a very important place. So without further ado, we shall start with the uh, <coughs> with the material that the grandmaster had prepared. Central cannon. Sandwich horse defense. And as in my previous videos, I've deliberately chosen to uh, put the put black as at the bottom so to facilitate uh, the viewer to see the bot in the eyes of the in the eyes of as black. So red would continue with the third pawn advancement. Black would counter, and red would develop his horse as an edge horse. The right elephant variation, and the five six cannons. This the position shown here would be the topic of discussion for the entire chapter. Uh, this is a very <coughs> Um, commonly played variation and one of the reasons is because since Black's uh, Pell Corner Cannon was able to do much damage and perform very efficiently Red would decide to counter with a Pell Corner Cannon of his own and um, uh, it will be noteworthy to mention that uh, instead of uh, the 5-6 cannons uh, Red will sometimes play the 5-7 cannons and for beginners, uh, there would not be 56 or 57 cannons on the board. Rather, the red, uh, the name of the 5-6 cannons would be derived from the position that they occupied early in the game. One cannon on the 5th file and one cannon on the 6th file. And the same will go for the 5-7 cannons, the 5-8 cannons and the 5-9 cannons. So, when faced with this formation, uh, two variations were discussed in the first board uh, where there will be three boards in this chapter the first one would be R9 plus 1 whereby Black could take the initiative to develop his left chariot as a ranked chariot and usually move it across the palace R9 equals to 4 to add pressure and counter the effects of red spell corner cannon and at this point in time uh, this would be a good move to make if Black chose to play a4 plus 5 uh, Red would have the advantage Red's chariot will be prepared to attack Black's left horse which will be uh, one of the fundamental weaknesses of the sandwich horse formation and the red horse would also be prepared to capture the central pawn to attack so uh, red would have the initiative firmly in hand so at this point in time uh, it is advocated that black should play r9 equals to 1 instead of a4 plus 5 red would continue with um, r9, r9 equals to 8 one might wonder if r2 plus 6 is viable uh, there will be many instances whereby black could trap the trap the offending chariot uh, which was not mentioned in this spot but in this case black would not have to worry about red playing r2 plus 6 uh, as a summary so uh, red would develop his left chariot as a riverbank chariot and it will be a steadfast approach to the game uh, which will be one of the major themes of one of the major themes of this <coughs> opening so uh, at, this, at this point in time uh, this will be another fundamental crossroad in this opening system uh, red would uh, usually choose to play either h3 plus 4 
or R2 plus 8 and these two variations will be discussed in detail in this part so for the first variation H3 plus 4 was played and black would counter with R6 plus 2 because if the red horse were able to cross the river uh, it could do much damage and weaken the formation of black so after pushing the cannon to the riverbank Red would, con <coughs> Red would change the direction of his attack and choose to target uh, Black's left horse. So one might wonder, um, would it be possible for Red to simply play R2 plus 7 to attack the horse directly instead of uh, moving the central cannon? So this, this line was given in the Grandmaster's book and we shall see so and black could be prepared to attack with c6 equals to 5 on the next move it will still be a very even game so as can be seen if red threatened to uh, attack the left horse in this manner Black would re simply retaliate with h3 plus 2. So instead of h3 plus 2, uh, which would be the recommended move, uh, black should not play r2 equals to 1. Uh, even though by trading <coughs> by trading material, the left horse will still be protected. That's that is because red would choose not to trade material and play r equals to to 5 instead and red was red would be concentrating his forces on black's left flank so c2 equals to 1 would not be a viable option in this situation so as can be seen r2 plus 7 would not be ideal either so again black could not have to worry about the left horse which would seem rather vulnerable uh, and red should not attack with r2 plus 7 so after red chose to um, move his central cannon to the third file to attack black's left flank uh, how should black react so at this point in time black could consider to trade chariots so this would place <coughs> this would place red in a dilemma uh, whether to accept or not uh, in the book i equals to 5 was recommended however what would happen if red did accept to trade ca chariots and after trading chariots red's riverbank horse would be immediately threatened by black's R4 plus 4 so black would slowly <coughs> seize the initiative away uh, would slowly delete whatever advantage that red would have in the preceding moves and this will not be ideal for red so that is why not trading chariots would be the uh, suggested move so if R equals to 5 for played black would protect this cannon and red would advance his edge pawn so that he could make way to develop his horse with r9 equals to 8 uh, r9 plus 8 to threaten the black chariot and black would move and at this point in time um, red should not threaten i uh, should not treat chariots because if he did Red would have a more stable and defensive formation and as usual uh, Black's left horse would be very vulnerable and it would be a cause of concern for Black so at this point in time it would have been better for Black to retreat his ch chariot to guard his own pawn rank 
and at this point in time uh, black can be satisfied with this situation as it will be rather even so although this situa situation is complicated um, it is still very commonly seen in tournaments in China today so as a quick uh, revision uh, in this chapter this would be the main position that was discussed uh, black would use the right elephant variation of the sandwich horse defense while red would choose to attack with the 5-6 cannons uh, with the edge horse and third pawn advan advancement variation so in the first variation a 9 plus 1 was played and red will continue with an I goes to 8 and red will continue his steadfast approach to the match with the riverbank chariot and it will be a rather even situation whereby black can be very satisfied with if instead of uh, this R3 uh, H3 plus 4 would be the first variation that was given the board in the second variation red would choose to attack very aggressively with R2 plus 8 uh, this would lead to a very complex situation a very complicated position so at this point in time uh, P3 plus 1 was recommended as black could sacrifice his pawn so another line that was given in the book was C2 minus 1 whereby black would be prepared to capture the black cannon and capture the red chariot so would this be viable? red would answer in this manner and black will only dare to play r4 <coughs> r4 plus 4 if red continued as planned with r4 plus 6 red will gain material and again the black horse would be in deep trouble so that was why although it would seem that r2 uh, sorry c2 minus 1 would be a very nice option it would not be a good idea at this point so instead of c2 minus 1 p3 plus 1 to sacrifice the pawn was advocated and red should capture the pawn with p7 plus 1 would r8 equals to 7 be viable? no because red would now, uh, sorry, black would now have no qualms about retreating his cannon as uh, black could attack the attack the chariot in this manner and also threaten with a smothered cannon checkmate while at the same time threaten the game material by capturing the red spell corner cannon so black would be better in this situation Sorry. and after sacrificing the pawn the red chariot will now have trouble trying to patrol the riverbank and this is this would be when red would <coughs> black would choose to attack aggressively with r4 plus 4 it is this would be a very delicate and precise move by black to turn the tables and it would be much better than r4 plus 3 because if r4 plus 3 were played Red would choose to uh, change his formation, and at this point in time, although the black, the red chariot was forced to the edge file, black would now run out of decent options and good lines to develop his material further. The loss of the third pawn would mean that red would have uh, be prepared to charge his seventh pawn across the river at any time. So in this situation. Uh, red would have a significant advantage so that is why black had to be proactive and aggressive with R4 plus 4 for the cross riverbank chariot instead of the riverbank chariot and in view of uh, black's aggression 
black it will be advisable for black for red to change its formation at this point in time uh, it will be a steadfast counter by red uh, at this point in time would it be possible for red to try to capture or attack the black horse with r2 equals to 3 and after sacrificing the horse black will be compensated with an attack that red would have a hard time trying to defend so at this point in time uh, black would have the advantage so although the black horse was sacrificed red would now be threatening with a smothered cannon checkmate and red will be forced to uh, to counter sacrifice his cannon to save his king or move his uh, king out <coughs> to the uh, fourth file but if the king will move to the fourth file uh, it will be also vulnerable to attacks by the black chariot and cannon at this position so it would not be advisable for black to try to attack the left black horse and this was the last move in this in variation 2 of the first board so at this point in time uh, this would be a rather even situation going to the mid game so while red would have fortified and covered up his weakness of the black elephant at the bottom rank uh, he, would he would have lost his central cannon and uh, it would <coughs> and uh, he would be compensated with an attack on the black horse uh, one might wonder was it, would it be possible for black to capture the horse so if black did capture the horse red would counter in this manner and capture the black chariot so black would lose either one of his chariots and this would of course be to red's favor so at this point in time it would have been better for black to retreat his chariot just in, just in case you were wondering why so as can be seen the sandwich horse defense uh, packs quite a vicious counter punch if you know uh, when and where and how to do it so it has also been one of the major reasons why it, uh, the sandwich horse defense is still very popular among players in games nowadays so I hope you have enjoyed the video tutorial this week and uh, stay tuned for part 2 of the chapter <coughs> in, the in the coming weeks and I thank you for your patience and if you like my youtube channel please do subscribe thank you